This week on Winchester's Deadly Passion, Melissa Bachman heads to Illinois for a late season muzzleloader hunt in her favorite whitetail destination in the country, West Central Illinois. Her primary focus will be hunting food plots, but with the large number of images and video from her cuttybacks, Melissa has decided to set the bar high. She's hunting incredible property, the weather is perfect, and she's done all her homework. So now it's time to let the hunting begin. Like many hunters around the country, whitetail hunting is what I grew up on and it's what I dreamed about as a little girl. Now I thoroughly enjoyed going out hunting, shooting lots of does for the freezer and really getting those great memories out with my family. That's what it's all about. But now that I'm able to travel around, I've also found some incredible places to go after the big bucks. Now of course, big bucks aren't everything but they sure are fun to go after and if you get a chance to go to an area, well there's one place in the country I would suggest for any whitetail hunter who's looking for big bucks and that is West Central Illinois. The reason is simple, there are a ton of deer in this area. Not only are there big deer, but the number of deer per square mile are probably some of the highest I have ever seen. It really makes it a lot of fun to go out on stand and see deer after deer, see fields full of deer. Now no, you may not shoot every one of them, but it's not always about just harvesting the deer, it's about the entire experience. And when I go to Illinois, well I know that I'm going to have an eyeful. Now not only are there big bucks and tons of deer in Illinois, but the other good thing is you get to take two bucks. That means double the fun. And this trip, I was headed out with my muzzleloader. Now one thing about late season hunts are the fact that you can get out there and you can really hunt those deer when they're coming out looking for food. Now as far as I'm concerned, two of the best times of the year to hunt a really big buck are during the rut when they let their guard down chasing around the ladies and when they're run down from the rut out looking for food. And that's exactly what this type of hunt would be. So it's very important to hunt food plots. Now I was hunting with Golden Triangle Whitetails and they have some incredible property. But they also have some great food plots. And when you're doing a late season hunt, that is super important. You want to make sure that you're going to be hunting over food and that the deer won't have to travel real far to get to it. Now I'd be sitting on a field that I love to bow hunt on. Now this is a field that has great areas all over it. But when you're bow hunting, you have to be very specific and pick a spot. I had stands all around the area. But for muzzleloader hunting, well, I decided to plant my ground blind right in the middle. Now, sure, it's good to brush a blind in, but if you can get out there early enough and put a blind up ahead of time, you can literally stick it right out in the middle of a field. The deer don't mind. They will get used to it, and it can be very helpful because you can cover all the areas. And that's exactly what I did. I had been out early, putting out cameras, finding what type of bucks were in the area, and scouting. My ground blind was in a perfect location and I was all ready for the big muzzleloader hunt. Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester Ammunition, Thompson Center, Cuddyback Digital, Bogpot, Cabela's, She Outdoor Apparel, and Hunter's Safety System. One of the things that makes Illinois so productive for big whitetails is the management. 
there is really a great level of people watching out and understanding what a mature deer is and waiting for these bucks to grow up. Now sure, you can have the genetics, you can have the big bucks, but if you don't let them grow up, you'll never reach that full potential. So by managing an area and having a big enough track of land to manage, well you'll find out that you can produce some giants. Now for me, deer hunting, it's almost like a year-round sport. You're able to get out there in that January, February, March, checking for sheds, looking at the farms, watching where the deer are moving. The next thing, food plots. Tons of food plots will get planted, almost 300 acres of them. But this is key in managing a deer herd. That way, they've got plenty of food and they'll never need to leave the property. And lastly, well, those tree stands. They need to be moved, tweaked, looked at, and really, the deer sometimes will change patterns too. So the more you can get out there, check to see what the deer are doing, and move your stands accordingly, the better your fall will be. One myth I hear quite often about late season hunting is people think, well, all the big bucks are gone. That couldn't be further from the truth. Sure, there's gonna be some big bucks gone, but when the temps drop down and the cold hits, those big bucks a lot of times will come out of the woodwork and you want to be right there on stand. The first setup I decided to try was a field that overlooked both corn, beans, kind of a mixture of everything. Sometimes it's really tough to get these food plots to grow because the deer eat them so quickly. So this time we decided to provide a smorgasbord. Sitting on stand, it wasn't long, and a big, nice buck came out. The problem, it wasn't super old. It was a beautiful buck with lots of points, but a little bit thin, all the genetics there, but just a little bit young. I knew that if I let this one walk, by next year, he could be a giant. And I'm all about trying to get these deer to their full potential. Let them grow up as big as they can and then harvest them. That is the ultimate key to getting giant bucks on your property. Maybe I'm becoming more of a watcher than a hunter. I don't care where you're at. To see this many bucks, that's amazing. There's no question, the cold makes it a lot easier to find some of the big bucks. They don't just always show themselves, but these guys are hungry and we've got all the food for them. It was a nail biter watching this big buck in the field, knowing at any second I could have taken that shot, but it was also kind of rewarding. One of those things to know that you had the option to take this buck, you've done everything you needed. You've provided the food, you have the perfect setup, everything was there to harvest this deer, but I made the decision to let him walk, and hopefully next year he'll reach his true potential. Throughout the entire hunting season, I've been using my cuttybacks all over, trying to get as many good pictures of bucks as possible. Now there's a lot of cool places you can put them, on travel corridors, on food plots, but one place I really like, put them on a rub, a big rub. You'd be amazed at how many different bucks will come through and hit that exact rub. Sure, there's a lot of big bucks that do the majority of tearing it up, but there's a few little guys that think they want to add a little bit to the puzzle and come through. So it's one way to see what type of bucks are on your property, but also get an idea of what time they're coming through so you can make a plan to hunt them. Tip of the Week is brought to you by Canning. The facts say a lot, but the ride says it all.
Late season can be one of the best times of the year to hunt, but you got to be able to stay warm and be able to stay out in those conditions. Now today, it's snowing, sleeting, but it should be a perfect hunting day. Now there's one trick that you can do, not necessarily bulk up to stay warm, but actually start thinking smarter. So what I use to stay warm is a variety of different things. First off, I love using the neck gaiter, always have. But with the Hot Mox neck gaiter, they have a slot that you can drop a hot hand in and slide this neck gaiter on, and it'll keep the warmth exactly where you need it. Now the other place you want to keep the warmth in, on your head. And this hat has a flap inside, another place to drop your heat source. Now you can leave it right inside on your head to keep you warm, or you can drop it down and have a second heat source on your neck, which can be helpful in some super windy conditions. Now the other thing that has a tendency to get cold when you're out there late season is your feet. Your feet can freeze really quickly. So Hot Mox has come out with a little booty that's small enough that can fit right in your backpack. With this one, you simply open up the slot, drop your heaters in, and your toes will stay extremely warm all day. So there's no question, late season hunting can be some of the best times out there. But you wanna stay warm, figure out how to beat mother nature at her own game. Use an external heat source on the perfect locations and you too can stay warm and have the great parts of a late season hunt. Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Swarovski Optic, North American Hunting Club, Rage Broadheads, Matthews, Can-Am, Wildlife Research Center, and Hot Mox. On this hunt, I was out filming myself. Now it can be very difficult to do at times, and there are certain hunts that are nearly impossible. In fact, I had just done a New Mexico elk hunt. That was tough. Spot and stock filming yourself? Well, this hunt, I would be in the ground blind, so I was hoping it would be much easier. I was all set up, had my camera up in the corner, ready to go, and I was just waiting for the bucks to show up. As a hunter, one of the most difficult decisions can sometimes be to take the buck or not. I've had beautiful, nice bucks in front of me today. It has been absolutely gorgeous, but I also have those cuttyback images in my head of the giants that have been coming through here. Some of them at night, some of them during the day, but the point is they're living here. So with all that on my mind, I decided to let this buck walk. As beautiful as he was, he's only going to keep getting bigger and maybe next year he'll be right at that level where he's the perfect time to take him. There are those bucks that are easy to pass, and those bucks who aren't. This guy, he gets one of those bucks who are not easy to pass. I just love a giant walk. For now, I pass. Tomorrow might be regretting time. Now, you might think I'm crazy, and maybe I am. But the reason I'm passing bucks like this is I know what this area can produce. I've been here firsthand. In fact, just a couple of years ago, I had a 202 inch buck get pushed to me by a pack of coyotes. Now, if that wouldn't keep you holding out for some big bucks, I don't know what would. I had beautiful pictures. I've seen the bucks in this area. So I wanted to make sure that I was holding out for a true giant. Now, it doesn't happen every year, but if you end up shooting a smaller buck, well, he'll never grow into that big boy. Half the battle is just being patient and having the confidence in the area that you can pass these types of bucks, let them grow up, and hopefully a bigger buck will be around the corner. I'm a hardcore bow hunter and hunting has always been my passion, but now it's also my career. So of course I need to make sure I'm going the extra mile on every hunt. But it can be difficult at times when it comes to scent control in the field. As a female bow hunter, I'm as concerned about scent as the next hunter, but I'll be honest with you, a product that's considered shampoo, body wash, and hand soap 
just doesn't cut it for my long hair all fall. Sure, it works for a while, but it gets to the point that people may think I'm starting to grow dreads because it becomes impossible to comb and extremely dried out. Finally, there's a company that's taken salon quality shampoo and conditioner and made it especially for women hunters. The line is called Just For Dose. They have volumizing shampoo, moisturizing conditioner, nourishing lotion, and silkening body wash, plus chapstick as well. All of course are scent free and will help your chances at bow hunting success this fall. They've also recently come out with a line called Just For Bucks as well. So the guys, well you haven't been left out and you too can stay scent free and continue looking good this fall. At only $12 a bottle you'll have all the advantages of staying scent free without all the unattractive side effects. If I can keep my hair in line hunting for five months straight, I think that speaks for itself. After sitting on the first stand location and seeing what came out that evening, I decided I was in for a change. I had set so many different places up that it was hard to stay in one location, so I decided to head to another field and sit on a U-shaped turnip field with mixed with buck forage oats. Now this place has produced giant bucks. You're not always going to see the number of deer you'll see on other places, but when you see bucks, usually they're a whopper. Once three o'clock or so came, deer started coming onto the field. In fact, I had several does come out and bed right in the middle of the food plot. Talk about a perfect decoy setup. And then I saw a buck. I'm watching this guy coming through the back just like the bigger bucks do. They don't always walk right out onto the field if they want to maybe scent check the does or just see what's going on. They'll usually stay in cover without exposing themselves and that's exactly what this guy did. He was just inching along the sides, watching the deer, and I looked at him and he was nice. Very nice, big rat, but no brows. Now this wasn't quite the buck I was looking for, but it definitely got my spirits up knowing that the bucks were probably on their feet and I had all the decoys needed right in my field. I don't know, I might be making a big mistake here, but if I am, I'll go home without a tag and guess I don't get any venison this year. When you're hunting in December, the weather can change in an instant. And unluckily for me, it started snowing, raining, just turning into a nasty day. Now this is a farm where you're not gonna see a ton of deer. You're gonna see a couple, but guess what? I don't have a ton of tags. I've got one buck tag. And my cutty back has been sitting out and it's telling me there are some giants here. There's one that's palmated, a drop time, another huge frame buck. Basically any of those will do. And that's kind of what's been giving me the confidence to keep passing these bucks, which I normally would have probably shot. There's no way I'd be on day three and let a buck like that walk by. But having a trail camera, I know what's here. It's not that maybe someone's seen them. Oh, they think it's a 170, 180, 190. I've seen the pictures. He's a giant. Now, I just gotta wait. And that's the tough part. <laughs> As the sun started setting, I looked over and I saw a buck right in the field. That was so cool. It's almost, almost at the end of shooting light. Any other producer in the world would have probably said, no goat, you're not shooting. 
But lucky for me, I'm on my own on this one. <sighs> that is one beautiful buck. Wow, not only is this an absolute beautiful buck, I filmed the whole hunt myself. This is not one you pass. This guy came into turnips about 10 minutes from dark and he's just got all points. This is what deer hunting's all about, waiting for the buck you've been looking for. Something like this, no one in their right mind could pass this guy. He's coming home in my truck. Wow. <laughs> well, this big boy was definitely worth the wait. Scoring 174 inches, this buck was a true trophy. And the thing is, I had just a wonderful hunt all the way leading up to it. I saw a ton of great bucks. Even if I didn't end up with a deer, I would have been happy. But a buck like this, well now my answer is simple when people ask where my favorite whitetail hunting destination in the country is. Golden Triangle Whitetails in West Central Illinois. Can you blame me? At this one place, I've been lucky enough to take a 202 inch buck with my bow after a pack of coyotes chased an entire field of deer to me. A 174 inch whitetail with my muzzleloader on this late season hunt. A 164 with my shotgun after I filmed them for nearly nine minutes earlier in the season, just outside of bow range, and a couple other beautiful bucks along the way as well. This is proof that if you're willing to put in the time scouting, hunting, planting food plots, and you find quality hunting land, the sky's the limit when it comes to big bucks in Illinois. Coming up next week on Winchester's Deadly Passion, Melissa heads to South Africa for some up close and personal encounters. We're talking every animal inside 20 yards. She's camping out in her own little dungeon and the animals are literally streaming by. Everything from blue wildebeest to kudu to warthogs and impala. Not only is the hunting incredible, but the views are absolutely breathtaking.